All right, guys, so as I mentioned, uh, I'm gonna show you the proof for the principle of inclusion, exclusion for a four-way Venn diagram. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, um, but uh, you know, they start to look very bizarre when you go up in order. You know, if you had a five-way, six-way, seven-way, I would actually recommend that you Google uh, that just to see what they look like. Um, like I said, they do look pretty bizarre. This one still looks pretty normal. Um, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead and show how uh, the principle of inclusion and exclusion works on this four-way. So just like in the last video, I'm going to start by counting each set individually. And it's a little bit hard to, um, to uh, refer to these, but I'll, I'll, I'll call this one A, this ellipse that's kind of right here. Um, I'll call this one B, the one that runs this way. C is going to be this lower one on the left and then D will be this one, uh, lower one on the right. So again, let's start by counting everything in A one time. So I'm gonna put a one in every space uh, that is included in A. And then I'm gonna do the same things for B, C, and D. So um, for, for B, let's go ahead and mark the things that haven't been counted yet, so one, two, three, and four, and then let's go ahead and change all the other ones in B. Let's, let's increase them uh, by one. So those are all at a two. Let's do the same thing for, uh, for C. So let's, uh, let's see, what have we not counted in C? It looks like this piece here and this one down at the bottom. So I'm gonna make those ones. I'm gonna change all of those ones, and I guess I better start color coding them uh, just so I don't get confused. Um, those are all twos now, and then these are going to be threes, all right? And then I gotta do it one more time for D, so I'm gonna put a uh, one right here. I'm gonna change all the ones in D to twos. I'm gonna change all the twos in D to threes. And I'm gonna change the three right here uh, to a four. So you can see that some of the things in here have been counted just one time. In fact, the things that have ones in them are the regions that are in C only, A only, B only, and D only. Uh, but then I've double counted several things. I've even triple counted some things. I've even quadruple counted. And of course, quadruple count is the part that was in all four um, of the objects. So I'm gonna start by subtracting away um, and in fact, maybe I should uh, color code this, uh, or actually get them all the same color, rather. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Well, let's get them to all be the same color so we can tell uh, from there what we've done already and what we have not. So that's a two, that's a two, that's a two. And that was a three. And then this was a four. All right, I think we're ready to go now. Um, so I'm gonna uh, now go by subtracting um, the two-way intersection. So I wanna take away one from everything that's in exactly two of these. Now this is much harder to spot where that region is um, on this diagram. So we have to be much more careful than we had to be on the three-way diagram. So I want what's in two of them only, uh, or not two of them only, but rather in each intersection of two of them. So if I do, I might as well list them out here just to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it right. Uh, I do need A intersect B, I need A intersect C, I need A intersect D, 
I need B intersect C, I need B intersect D, and I need C intersect D. And then I can mark them off uh, as I have done them. So uh, for A intersect B, I need everything that's in this ellipse and that ellipse. If you want, uh, we can uh, highlight that region. Right? And so you can see that that's the part that is in uh, both A and B. So all of those numbers uh, need to come down by one. So I'm gonna make it a one, these will be twos, and that will be a three. So one, twos, threes, and I've done this one. All right, and now I'm gonna go about doing the same thing for um, the other five of those. So let's now look Get rid of this highlight so that doesn't confuse me anymore. Um, let's now do A intersect C. Now A and C are the two ellipses that go this way. So um, the intersection of those then will be that uh, football looking region right there. So uh, those are all going to come down by one as well. That'll be a one, one, two, two. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, change those as well. One, one, two, two. Okay. Um, and so let's go ahead and mark that off also. All right. A intersect D. Now A is the one, the upper one this way, and D is the lower one here. So what we're talking about is all of these twos right here. Um, I'm not going to worry about highlighting that since that's easy enough to see. So uh, these are all going to become ones. All right, and then I've done that one. Now B intersect C. So B is the upper one running this way and C is the lower one running that way. So we're talking about all of this region right here. Um, so that's going to be zeros here, a one and a two. Um, I think that's not so much I can't remember it, hopefully. So zero, zero, one, two. Check. Um, and then B intersect D is uh, both of the ellipses running this way. So it's gonna be all of this right through the middle. Um, so going from low to high, that's gonna be one. And let's actually say negative one here. We're actually, we haven't counted it at all. Um, in fact, we've kind of negative counted it, uh, zero and one. So one, negative one, zero, one. And that one's done. And then the last thing I need is C intersect D. And those are, of course, the lower two. Um, and so we can see that that's this, uh, I guess, uh, teardrop shape right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and drop those down as well. That's going to be a negative two. These will be zeros, and that will be a one. So negative two, couple zeros, and a one. All right, so I've done all the three-way intersections now, or sorry, two-way intersections. Um, so notice I have a lot of ones in there. Um, of course, I also have some zeros. Uh, and I even have a negative two, so I, I'm going to have to add back to get those zero. Nothing's above one, so I don't need to subtract at this point, uh, but I do need to add back to get those. So I'm going to now look at the three-way intersections, and let's uh, get rid of this list, and let's rewrite what the three-way intersections will be. Well, I've got A, B, and C. I also have A, B, and D. I also have A, C, and D, and I have A, or sorry, I already did all mine with A, uh, B, C, and D. And if you think about it, there's only four of those because for each three-way intersection, we're leaving one of the four sets out. So it makes sense that there should be four of those. Um, now let's do the same thing. So this one's going to be, of course, much harder to spot. I'm looking for A intersect B intersect C. Well, A intersect C is this part right here. And then if I intersect that with B, I'm talking about these two things only. 
Does everybody see that? Hopefully you do. Um, and so let's add one back on those. So if I add one back, this will become a one, and this will, of course, be a negative one. All right, and I've done that one. Now I have A intersect B intersect D. Um, so A intersect, actually, let's do B intersect D. I think visually that's easier to see. So B intersect D is this region. And then, of course, if we intersect that with A, we're talking about these two parts only. Um, and so let's increase those by one, that'll make this a zero and this a one. Okay, and I've done that one. Let's do A intersect C intersect D. So again, A intersect C is this region here, but now I wanna intersect that with D. Well, that's uh, only these two right here. So notice if I add those back, if I make uh, those both ones by counting them one time, uh, you notice that, first off, I'm, I'm almost, I have almost a one in every spot. Uh, the only one that's not a one right now is that one, which is a zero. And of course, I haven't done um, this part right here. So let's identify the region B intersect C intersect D. Um, so B intersect D is this region here. And then, of course, if I intersect that with C, that's both of those. So I'm going to increase those both by one. That'll make this a one and that one a two. Okay. And so everything is a one at this point, except for this right in the middle. And all I need to do is back off of that by one, my count by one, and that ought to get ones everywhere, just like in the last video. So what does that region correspond to? Well, of course it's in C and it's in D. In fact, C intersect D is, like I said before, this tear-shaped region down here at the bottom. But then if I intersect with A, that's only going to be the upper two parts right here, these two. And then if I intersect with B, that's only that one. So in other words, that region that's at a two right now um, is the intersection of all four of the regions in the Venn diagram. So if I back off of that one by one, I have a count of one in every single region. All right. So let's go ahead and summarize what it was that we did. And I'm going to, uh, just because I don't have a lot of room here to write, I'm going to go to a blank screen. So uh, what did I do? Well, I counted, again, using the n function uh, as before, I counted each set individually. And of course, that um, double, triple, and quadruple counted some things. So I ended up subtracting all the two-way intersections. There was A with B, A with C, A with D, B with C, B with D, and oops, C with D. But then I had to add back all of the three-way intersections, so A, B, and C, a, B, and D, um, A, C, and D, and B, C, and D. And then for the very last thing, I had to subtract away the four-way intersection. And that gave me a one in every set. So this really is um, just an example with a, a four-way uh, Venn diagram. Again, just like before, we started by adding everything once. We subtracted away all the two-way intersections. We added back all the three-way intersections. On the three-way diagram, that was it. But on this one, since it's a four-way, then we subtracted. If we had, if we had, had a five-way one, we would have... Uh, once we had subtracted all the four-way intersections, we would have added back the five-way. So basically what we do is each time we have one of these, we add, then subtract, then add, then subtract, um, and basically keep going until we, we run out of uh, sets to do. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I think that's just easier to kind of see um, as I do it rather than try to explain it written down. So hopefully that made sense. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, uh, just get in touch with me and I will help you out.